Okay, well this is revisiting another project that I've had that I'm doing a little work on. Been cleaning up and trying to delete as much junk as I can. And what I've got is I've got this radio, which I had done a uh, kind of like a board swap conversion back in 1983 when I was a kid. And as you can see, the original chassis has been emptied out. And the volume control and tuner have been relocated off board and hooked to the originals. And I was trying to replace the capacitor and work on this, and I fried the entire board. And I want to restore this, not to original, but restore it to 1983 when I did the conversion. So I searched around and voila, I found the exact same radio that I had when I was a kid. And the exact same board. I've already removed the volume knob. I gotta do the tuner capacitor and then do the conversion again. And this is actually also needs the capacitor, but I'm gonna order them the right ones. This is what the case looks like. And then I had also bought this one, but this one has a different board. And I did show it in the other video. This seemed to be one of GE's signature designs. But I will be saving these clock movements for other radios. And the motors out of these clocks can be worth some money. Because they're irreplaceable to people that need the motors. So I'm going to set this down and I'm going to work on this removing the uh, tuning capacitor from this circuit board like I did in 1983 and then I will wire that board in and replace this. And although the capacitors are still bad at least the radio will be back to its state of hum. This isn't really a professional studio by any means. I can imagine this was really a really a pain to do this without solder sucker or or anything what I usually do is just kind of flex the board a little bit work the first one I think these guys bent these over the little bend tabs on them or something that was 27 years ago. I'm not 100% sure how I did this. But awfully heavy, awfully thick metal. Let's try again here. There it goes. device can, can be a, kind of difficult. Nice thing with these really old circuit boards is they're so primitive that even if you mess them up, you can just do a point to point bypass. Used to do it all the time. As 
things used to be built to last forever. Take your time and be careful. We got two more connections left. Okay, tuning capacitor is gone. Now, what I guess I did. Is I got a jumper putting those two together and three lines which are going from the board into the original tuning capacitor and I'm gonna simply replace the board as if I'm replacing the proper board and I had done the same thing with the volume control one at a time so we know where they go. This is how I replace modern parts and stuff. I guess I didn't have to heat that one up. Emphasizing the fact you can only do one at a time because there's no schematic for this radio now. It's a uh, homemade setup. Now this stuff is so old that it's... In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll just trim these off. Leave about a quarter inch of the insulation so I know which color goes where. black and the white lines must be the power coming from the original switch on the front. This is really a stupid mod. The thing is, it's something that I did when I was like 13 years old. So I kind of want to preserve it, even though it's not worth anything to anybody. There isn't even any radio stations anymore to listen to. Except for the political talk shows. So, so far I've got the volume wires tied in from the old board to the new board. I'm going to break off and do the tuning capacitor wires in part two.